In this coming series of videos, we're going to look at discrete integration and look at trying to control the convergence of this so that we can control how many digits of accuracy we have when we perform the numerical integration. So here is what we want to integrate. We're integrating uh, Gaussian. We're multiplying by ut, which is a step function. So one would say, okay, well, you only have to start the integration at zero. We could actually obtain an analytical answer here, but we're doing this numerically. And we want to take control of our numerical integration so that we can control how many digits of accuracy we have. But first I wanted to show you the equation that we're working with. And if we look at this equation, we understand we actually have two questions to answer. One is the obvious one, how many points do we use for our numerical integration? But then the other one are these limits. We can't integrate from minus infinity to positive infinity. And yeah, we kind of know we could cheat a little bit. We only have to start at zero, but it doesn't answer what to do with this upper limit. How far do we have to take that? So here we actually have to study convergence of two things, the number of points and the limits. Let's go ahead and dive into this. So I'll get rid of that equation. And we're in MATLAB, and I will start a new script. On the first line, I like to type in what I will name this file. Let's call this demo numerical integration. And I'm going to hit return a whole bunch of times because I don't like writing code on the last line in the editor. I just don't think it behaves well. So now what I'll do is I will copy this. I will say save as and paste what I've just typed and say save. Now I have a script file in memory, demo numerical integration. And if I click this run button, it does two things. It saves my script file and it runs it. See over here, it typed this in automatically for us. So we're ready to go. And the first thing we'll do in our script file is initialize MATLAB. Always do this, initialize MATLAB. So I will close all the open figure windows. I will clear the command window so we'll no longer see the demo numerical integration. Even though that's being typed, it'll be typed, but then it'll get cleared. And then the final thing and most important is to clear all the variables from memory. Now, we're not going to do a traditional dashboard and some of my other codes. I always start with a dashboard where all of the hard coded numbers go, but this code will not be sophisticated enough to really warrant having to do a dashboard. So we'll just dive right into this. And the first thing we'll do is define our function. And so we will say func at x. We only have one input variable x. And now we'll type in our function. So it's exponential minus x dot squared. And it's the period squared because we're doing a point by point multiplication. And we know it's only half of this. We have to put the step function in there. But let's end that. And let's go ahead and and look at the regular Gaussian and then chop it in half. So let's just explore this function. Let's just plot it and play with it a little bit. So we need to calculate function. Well, how many points should we use? I'll just throw out a number like, uh, I don't know, 100. That sounds good for right now. And we need our limits. We can't plot this from minus infinity to positive infinity. So let's just choose something. So let's choose an XA being something and an XB being something. And let's go from, I don't know, how about minus 10 to positive 10? If we don't like it, we can come back and change it. That's the great thing about a code. All right. So we're going to have a series of points going from XA to XB, sort of. So we'll create this array x. That'll be the position of each point. And we might be tempted to use the lin space command with something like this. We're going from xa to xb with n steps. And the problem with that is it places the start and stop point exactly on xa and xb. And that's not what we want here. We want our points to be at the center of each rectangle. Remember, we're using discrete integration, the centered discrete integration. So we can't do it that way. Well, how do we do it? Well, let's call this uh, x. Let's first create an array, 0 0.5, all the way up to big N minus 0 0.5. This creates an array that goes 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, and all the way up to, in this case, 99.5. If I multiply this by dx, now I'll have half dx, 3 has dx, 5 has dx, and all the way up. 
So if I add XA to all of those, now I get the center position of each rectangle going from a half cell above XA all the way up to a half cell below XB. All right, and then last thing, finally, we'll calculate our function and it's func of X. Let's run this to make sure we don't have any errors. We didn't make a mistake somewhere. Uh, we goofed. We did not calculate our DX. Our DX will be the span, which is XB minus XA divided by big N. All right, let's go ahead and run it again. Now it's running co correctly. And DX is the space from point to point. We still don't know if it's correct. We should plot it. So let's plot the function. Plot XF. Go ahead and run that. And we have a decent Gaussian. However, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing little sharp corners up here. And that means we have not used enough points and we're in a position here where we can comfortably use more points. So let's go ahead and just use a thousand points instead of a hundred because we always want curved lines whenever we possibly can. The only other thing I might want to do is, is put some space at the bottom and the top just to see the entire Gaussian. So maybe we'll do an X limb. We don't really need to do this line of code, but uh, you know, I guess I just do it anyway for robustness. The second one we definitely need. Why? We're going to fix our y-axis limits. Let's go back and look at our function. So it's starting at 0 and going all the way up to 1. So if I want a little bit of space below this, I might have the smallest va value be negative 0.1 and then the biggest value 1.1. And if we run it now, we see our Gaussian with some comfortable space above and below it. Well, we need to chop this in half. Remember, our original equation was multiplying by the step function. So let's do a dot times x greater than or equal to 0. So this is a Boolean operation. And anywhere x is greater than or equal to 0, we'll get a 1. And so then it's multiplying this function by 1. And really, we just have this function anytime x is positive. Now, when x is negative, this Boolean operation gives us a zero, and it doesn't matter what the exponential is. We're multiplying by zero, and our function is zeroed out. So we should see half a Gaussian. Why half a Gaussian? Well, this sharp little discontinuity makes it a bit more challenging for a numerical integration to resolve. So it makes this problem a little more interesting. All right, just for fun, let's perform a numerical integration just to ballpark what our integration is. We're not taking control over this or the accuracy or anything. We're just going to do a discrete integration and see what we get. So we'll call this perform crude or maybe uncontrolled, I don't know, uh, discrete integration. So this is pretty simple. We'll call this I naught. It's simply the sum of F times DX. And I'll leave the semicolon off so we can see what the result is at the command prompt. And we'll close that. And we're getting a value 0.8862-ish, so 0.88. And so that's a good number to see if we get the same number as we continue to work on this. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll do a preliminary convergence study on the number of points. And we'll point out some problems with that, and then we'll resolve that and fix that in yet the next video. And then we'll look at the limits in the video after that. And finally, we'll perform the numerical integration once we know how many points to use and our limits. All right, see you in the next video.